Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a weekend update, Saturday, May 18th, 2024. It's about 10.52 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe, as you can see, is uh, quite a bit of movement happening there into the Southern California area, area uh, this morning. Got a decent swarm of earthquakes stirring up here. Roughly about uh, 111 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, although this looks like it stirred up roughly about 1 o'clock this morning. So literally within the last 12 hours, 11 hours, we've seen over 100 earthquakes here off of the uh, southern end of the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is an extensional plate boundary of the San Andreas Fault. So this is a little concerning, obviously, when we got uh, that much earthquake activity close to a major locked area. Now, um, if it was only simply this swarm, uh, you know, we, obviously we do see earthquake swarms on this area uh, occasionally. But over the last week or so, we've seen oh, a migration of movement. Let me stir up the last seven days of activity here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, further south along the plate boundary, just off the Imperial Fault, we've seen a decent swarm here. Significant swarm itself. Uh, with really no main quake we've seen some threes some twos a couple upper fours as well but really no main quake to set off a sequence of aftershocks uh, we watched that migration head up here a little bit you can see the yellow circles there indicating some of that earthquake activity roughly about the same time as this earthquake swarm further south last week stirred up but now today as you can see we got a really decent earthquake swarm stirring up with no main sequence of earthquake activity far as the main quake goes. So this is obviously some uh, regional stress out here and an area to watch, obviously, because the San Andreas Fault is primed for the big one. And uh, let's see what we got so far as far as the largest magnitudes go. Uh, bring up largest magnitude shows a couple of threes here, very similar to the other earthquake swarm down south. No fours yet, uh, no big quake but always uh, be prepared for some potential larger scale movement when we see activity like this. Uh, the depth of these earthquakes here, roughly about five to six kilometers or so. Um, you know, and a lot of people have that, that, that uh, thought that these little earthquake swarms relieve stress on a fault system, right? Well, this is not relieving stress. This is, if you look at the last seven days again, this is migrational movement here from one area to the other upwards up along the plate boundary and of course you know we haven't seen any uh, earthquake activity up here on the san andreas fault the southern branch here in quite a while so uh, you know a lot of stress has been built up and the magnitude that the geologists and whatnot are throwing around is an 8.1 when this thing decides to go so we'll watch that we're already getting a little bit of activity potentially stirring up further north here you know, as I showed you, it's a migrational pattern up north close to the San Andreas Fault. The latest one, 1 1.6 and 2.1 early this morning, a little bit closer to that southern branch. You know, oh, Dr. Lucy Jones here, the uh, face of the USGS, and everyone turns to her for her earthquake knowledge and whatnot. And she claims that the triggering zone... Uh, is about a mile or two from the San Andreas Fault. So this is getting awfully close here. We've got to watch that, see if uh, the swarming doesn't get uh, a little bit closer to this region. The main swarm here sits about, oh, looks like about 10 to maybe 15 miles just to the south uh, with this cluster. But still, got to watch it because that's a quite a bit of earthquake activity. You know, regionally around this area here, 100 and, what do we got, 112 earthquakes just in the last 12 hours so that's a pretty significant amount of earthquake activity coming in all at once and with the way things have been here in the last couple days with um, you know the swarming migration and whatnot we got to keep an eye here on Southern California so throwing up an earthquake watch here for now as we're getting uh, this elevated activity keep an eye here on the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault regionally as a whole you know we've seen that uh activity stirring up out here it's not just you know where it's not like we've seen a 4.9 to start this all off at uh start off the swarm and then a bunch of aftershocks 
that, that didn't happen that way. It started off with just a bunch of swarming and it threw in a couple fours or so in this area in the swarming. Same exact thing that's happening here. There's no main quake. That tells me right there that it's regional stress and we need to be on guard here uh, and keep an eye on Southern California. Uh, the rest of the states out here got movement out in Texas, a little bit in Oklahoma, New Madrid seismic zone, and a small little earthquake out there in Georgia. Uh, Hawaii is still stirring things up out here, it looks like, around the Kilauea volcano. Two separate swarms now, one across the uh, southern area here, just south of the summit area, and also newer activity stretching out once again to the upper east rift zone. This is what I was talking about last night. Watch for, you know, obviously a displacement of magma. The summit area and the upper east rift zone is quite uh, inflated here. Let me double check the latest information here from the USGS, see what they got, uh, where the volcano is currently sitting at a yellow and advisory. So no changes overnight with that, but it does look like we're seeing a renewed earthquake movement out here across the upper east rift zone. Uh, the seismograph stations here, let me see if I can zoom in and pick one out. Oh yeah, it still shows quite a bit of earthquake activity here in the last few hours. And yesterday we were watching that deformation data uh, go down a little bit. Let's see if we've gone back up overnight. Starting to go back up here, it looks like getting a little bend here indicating some further inflation. But this is a common, um, typical type of pattern that you would see here across this volcano uh, with this stair-stepping ladder event. And uh, we're at a high level right now. We're at a we're at a pretty much the highest level since about 2018, since the 2018 eruption. So things are uh, definitely progressing, and I think we need to watch this pretty closely here, folks. So a few things going on. Obviously, Southern California and Hawaii overnight, far as any large-scale movement goes out here across the area of the Western Pacific. Uh, so far, 4.7, 5.7 earlier this morning near New Guinea, Papua New Guinea area. Aside from that, most of the earthquake movement out here is from yesterday. So keep an eye on today, California, West Coast. Definitely looks like things are about ready to um, stir up out here. As far as any uh, major space weather events go, let's see what we got. Uh, there's that uh, large M flare from yesterday. Really haven't seen anything kicking up since then. In fact, we're kind of settling down into the low C flare category. But uh, remember that we got that giant sunspot here, 3685, with a, uh, a companion, companion 3686, that uh, looks promising here. There's still quite a bit of complexity. Uh, maybe a little bit of weakening going on here within this core. We'll have to watch that, though. They go through these little phases of strengthening and weakening. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that regional sunspot area. Uh, the rest of these sunspots that are currently facing the Earth are relatively stable, uh, but still the overall threat right now remains yeah, somewhat elevated. 10% chance for a next flare, M flare at 40, C flare around 99% chance or so. As uh, far as any major uh, close approaches here with the Earth in terms of asteroids today, as you can see uh, for the 18th of May, well, the closest one is going to be a 40-foot 43-foot uh, asteroid, about a bus size. Look at that distance, though, over a million miles uh, from the Earth. So this is uh, that's the closest one that's being marked here. So really don't have too much in the way of any close encounters right now. That's quite a safe distance. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, I do have a couple seismograph stations there in Southern Cal. Oh, watch the Barrett station. That station right there is in Southern Cal. And probably the one that's picking up uh, the majority of the activity in Southern California. Uh, we'll just keep an eye on it because, uh, you know, I think it's hard to deny the migrational pattern that's going on here with this swarming. And it's starting to kick its way up here across this region of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. And that's, you know, any type of movement like this, I've said in the past, can be a sign of uh, some foreshocks or a little warning here that things are getting... Uh, potentially getting active across this area. Obviously, they're active to an extent, but they can get much more active in terms of larger scale movement. The best thing to do is be prepared, have an earthquake plan. 
We'll check back in later this afternoon, see how things are progressing. Uh, unless something major happens, we'll jump back in here and do an update. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here in a little bit. Stay safe.